Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Request for the defence of the parliamentary immunity of Lara Comey and regional branding Simplified law may boost online sales in the EU European Union approves stricter tobacco rules plus EU approves 1 billion euro funding for broadband digital services. Business is picking up in our legislation section as the kleptocrats whip the EU legislative scribes into a frenzy. We'll bring you more on the reports from our legislative research team later in the show. It's Tuesday the 11th of March. Good to have you with us. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the story from our legislation section. Request for the defence of the parliamentary immunity of Lara Comey. During the television programme Servizio Publico on 24th of January 2013, Lara Comey debated with Antonio Ingroia, the leader of a political party, on matters relating to public procurement and organised crime in connection with the bankruptcy of Concostruzioni. During this debate, Roberto Sofriti, the former mayor of Ferrara, who was standing as a candidate in the Italian national elections of February 2013 on the party list of Antonio Ingroia, came up as a subject of discussion. Mr Sofriti claims that the statements made by Lara Comey concerning him during the debate in question were damaging to his reputation and he therefore filed a complaint on the grounds of aggravated slander. Aggravated slander. I wonder if that's like aggravated burglary here in the UK. Essentially the same thing, except that you do the slandering with a baseball bat. Regional branding. The report welcomes the concept of community-led local development and calls on member states to implement this concept. Member states have been asked to promote more dynamic forms of participatory governance as a way of implementing common territorial development projects able to cover all economic sectors, including tourism. In this vein, the Commission is called upon to include various forms of tourism which involve rural activities in its related programmes and measures, and the report stresses the need for targeted initiatives and programmes to promote rural tourism activities. Given the prolific amount of multiple labels and regional brandings regarding food products within Europe, the Commission is also invited to draw up in an inventory of brands with specific regional features. OK, so what does all this mean? Or, in fact, do? Well, it creates powers for the EU to promote itself and its own regions. So, for example, Scotland is classed as a region, London is a region, and Wales is a region. Now, Let's take a look at an example of regional branding in action. This article, which you can find on our website from April 2012, entitled Brussels orders EU flag flies over Whitehall every day, to which Eric Pickles reacted with fury after being ordered by Brussels to fly the EU flag continuously over Whitehall. The cabinet minister said the demand showed a deep sense of political insecurity and called on the European Union to grow up. Simplified law may boost online sales in the EU. Online businesses should gain easier access to the European Union's 507 million consumers thanks to a new law passed by the European Parliament on Wednesday. The so-called European Sales Law was approved by 416 votes to 159, with 65 abstentions. The law allows businesses selling or offering services across internal EU borders to opt for a single type of sales agreement no matter where they do business. Currently, companies must comply with 28 different national sales contracts, costing, on average, €10,000 in translation and legal fees for each additional export market. Smaller companies are expected to be most likely to benefit from these new rules. EU approves stricter tobacco rules. 
Tobacco products in the EU will soon feature less attractive packaging and menthol cigarettes will be on their way out in a move that mirrors Australia's crackdown on big tobacco. The bloc's parliament approved new rules on Wednesday aimed at curbing smoking. By ensuring that tobacco products look and taste like tobacco products, the new rules will help to reduce the number of people who start smoking in the EU, Tonio Borg, the bloc's health commissioner, said on Tuesday. He argued that tobacco has a devastating effect on health, pointing to estimates that 700,000 Europeans die of tobacco-related diseases every year, and that smokers live an average of 14 years less than than non-smokers, and that they spend more years in poor health. In a world first, Australia introduced plain packaging in late 2012, with all cigarettes and tobacco products now sold in drab olive brown packets. The UK is set to follow Australia's lead, with England likely to introduce plain packs before the 2015 election. So, folks, when Big Cheese Dave Cameroni tells you that UK Parliament is introducing plain packs or that it's waiting for results from trials in Australia, remember that the pointless pimples in the La La Nursery of Westminster have had their nuts cut off and are simply obeying the diktat of their political masters in Brussels. The EU Commission, you know the one, the one the BBC and other mainstream media describe as the EU's executive arm. And just remember that having suckled the mother of all parliaments dry, this executive arm is an arm that neither you nor I can elect into or out of power. Not even if they decide to televise it with Simon Cowell and Cheryl Cole as the judges. The EU approves 1 billion euro funding for broadband digital services. The European Union will spend 1 billion euros on digital services and improving high-speed broadband networks as part of a deal agreed on Wednesday. The total is a big come down from the 9.2 billion that was first proposed, but cut by the EU leaders a year ago. The European Parliament on Wednesday voted in favour of the reduced funding for the Connecting Europe facility without further haggling. With the reduced funds, the programme will only be able to provide seed funding for a limited number of broadband projects. Only 15% of the budget has been earmarked to support broadband, and one third of those must aim for speeds of 100 megabits per second or above. Other digital projects that apply for funding will need to demonstrate state-of-the-art technological solutions and represent either innovative business models or highly replicable solutions. So remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.